What is so special about a Great Western building and why should I buy a Great Western instead of some other brand? That's a great question and one I'm eager to answer. But first, I, I think we should ask another question. What is a Great Western building and how does it compare to the other building systems out there? Hello, I'm Eric with Great Western Buildings. Last week I mentioned that we've put a short pause on our video erection series because we, we, we just can't get the quality footage for those how-tos during the coronavirus shutdowns. In the meantime, we're answering some of your most common questions, uh, the ones that we get online and through our various social media pages. We'll be getting back to the construction support videos very soon. Uh, we appreciate your patience and we're still here to take any questions about construction over the phone. A Great Western building is a traditional pre-engineered metal building, which I'll just refer to as a metal or steel building. I, I use the word traditional because there's a variety of other companies and products out there that advertise a completely different system as a pre-engineered metal building. It's kind of a broad term anyways. A traditional steel building is simple. A building from Great Western has a primary framing system consisting of solid web I-beams. Sometimes we refer to these as three-plate members or H-beams, which I can explain in a future video, but I-beam is the simplest way to think about it. A secondary structural system consisting of 12, 14, and 16 gauge girts and purlins shaped like Zs or Cs that connect the primary framing structure. Uh, the, the secondary framing system bridges the gap between the primary I-beams, the, the rafters and the columns, and gives the wall and roof sheets something to attach to. This is an oversimplification, but the main takeaways here are that the I-beams have a solid web, meaning the middle portion of the I-beam is a solid plate of steel with flanges to make up the top and bottom of the eye. And all of the building components are steel. These types of buildings are some of the strongest building systems around. In, in fact, next time you're in a community center, an indoor riding arena, a large open church, take a look up and chances are you'll see what I've described. Other structures that sometimes use the term metal building are Kwanzaa huts kind of the iconic American structure. You will spot these throughout the farming regions of the U.S., usually used as airplane hangars, grain storage, and so on. These buildings have become less prominent recently, mostly because of the difficulty getting them permitted and approved by the local building authorities, and of course by HOAs and other architectural design committees. It's unlikely that you'll ever see one of these younger than 30 years old in a metropolitan or a suburban area. There's nothing wrong with them, they last, they're simple to build, and they're generally inexpensive. But some folks do consider them ugly, and they also lack flexibility in design, especially when it comes to the shape of the building, color options, uh, insulation, and door and window locations on the sidewalls. Beware, usually these buildings are sold without end walls, and you may be required to build your own. Uh, in fact, this is my buddy's Kwanzaa building. It serves a purpose, and it's awesome. Uh, but the end walls had to be built separate and it's really not a great design. Next we have the carport, tube steel and C-channel structures. I, I don't want to dive too far onto these because I, I really like to keep our videos positive. Uh, what, what, while I do believe that these structures have their place and, and can provide good solutions, they're, they're just really not in the same league as a true pre-engineered steel building. If cost is more important than longevity, weather tightness, wind and snow load requirements and other things, then these are a great option. Basically, if you just want a cover to park something to keep it protected from the sun and the rain, go for it. Just be sure to anchor it down well. Uh, it, usually, except for some of the C-channel or bolted frame buildings, uh, these things are temporary in nature. So you may be able to avoid permitting altogether if that's a concern. I, I think you may be surprised though when comparing costs. A building like a Great Western may not be that much more expensive as far as the structure goes. However, uh, foundations, overall construction, is a bit more involved. But, but I think it's worth it. Now, on to open web truss buildings. These buildings come with a lot of options as it relates to the secondary structural design. Uh, the main things with these is, is that the truss is open, uh, very similar to a bar joist you may see as the roof system of a home center or a strip mall. Uh, Walmart. 
most bar joist buildings I've seen, are, they also use timber framing to span between the joists for the roof and the walls, uh, two by fours. This has always been a little silly to me. You lose all the benefits of a steel frame by using the wood. And the main drawback, in my opinion, is the joists and columns are run on very tight centers for those two by fours, four to six feet usually. Like the Quonset hut, this limits the door options on the sidewall. H however, you can find these option with steel girts and purlins. Oddly enough, similar engineering or similar buildings, or a similar building design, I should say, is used for absolutely massive buildings. Uh, I'm talking professional sports stadiums and the like. Uh, the difference though, is instead of a 3 8 or half inch round bar and some angle iron, those systems are heavily engineered and use huge I-beams and other hot rolled numbers. Uh, the, the Western Center here in Denver comes to mind. While technically not a pre-engineered steel building, there are also pole barns. I love pole barns. Uh, Cleary and Morton come to mind as the big boys in this industry. And, and don't let the word barn fool you. The sky's the limit with those things. Uh, the drawback, in my opinion, is maintenance and longevity. Uh, wood rots. Uh, it expands and contracts with humidity in the seasons, and that can cause the screws to come loose, which you'll you know have to go and retighten. And and lumber just isn't as robust as steel. While these buildings aren't any usually aren't any less expensive than a genuine steel building, proper foundations aren't always necessary. Just poles in the ground, maybe with uh, concrete at the bottom or just around the pole, uh, kind of like a big fence post. But that leads to the obvious issue although it can save some money. I'm not saying that pole barns don't last, but you're probably not gonna get a lifetime structural warranty on one. With that said, I, again, I just love how pole barns can be jazzed up. Sometimes they're the best looking, most tricked out things that you'll see. And I, I mean, now that we've discussed the difference between most of the building systems out there, I feel pretty good about explaining why I think, or what I think, a Great Western offers that other suppliers and manufacturers or resellers of traditional solid web metal buildings may not. I'll start with the building itself. Or actually, first, when I opened this company, I knew that our customer base was, was primarily going to be first-time builders, do-it-yourselfers, and small constructions, even though we do sell to some you know, huge construction companies and massive projects. But, was, but I had a few goals in mind to take care of our primary customer. We wanted to provide an American-made, high-quality building that we could stand behind for a lifetime, and it had to be extremely affordable. We also wanted a building system that was easy for anyone with basic construction experience to build. With those goals, we settled on using all pre-galvanized secondary members, uh, girts, purlins, headers, door jams, base angles, and so on, just for longevity. We also decided to paint our main structural members dark gray. Not only does the gray match the, the awesome look of the secondaries, it, it doesn't conceal rust like a red iron building. Ever wonder why they paint those things red anyways? Uh, our, our paint makes issues like surface rust easy to spot and remedy before it becomes a larger issue. But we even offer a troubleshooting guide and maintenance log with every building. This helps outline the procedures to properly maintain the building and address any issues that may come up. We knew with the proper care, a building like this would last. And that's why we have the lifetime structural warranty on the framing system. Knowing what makes a building difficult to put up, I was not gonna allow bolted clips in our buildings where we could avoid it. When I was just a guy working in the field, I can remember digging through buckets and barrels and boxes of loose, unlabeled clips. What a waste of time and effort. You know, wh why not have all those welded into place at the factory? Well, uh, the answer is easy. Uh, a building with bolted clips is easier and less expensive to manufacture and ship. We refuse to compromise on our customer's build experience by cutting corners just for the sake of the guys in the shop and the shipping department and, and saving a few bucks. I'll tell you, hanging a 12 gauge, 25 foot long girt, seven foot high with just a bolt through a couple of flangers is something I wouldn't wish on anyone. I could go on and on about detailed design features, but I don't want to get into the weeds. Maybe it's a good topic for another video. Next, a great Western building comes with what I consider to be the most detailed and comprehensive erection manual in the industry. This took us nearly two years to complete, and we're still working on it. Uh, besides quality, affordability, and ease of erection, I, I also wanted unparalleled customer support. 
not just a good sales or buying experience, which, which is important of course, but I also wanted to give our customers something I've never seen a steel building company take seriously. And that's all the back end construction support we could offer. Enter our 24 seven construction support line. This is available to every one of our customers. And we even take calls and offer support on other companies' buildings from time to time. That's always fun. Since it's usually me taking those calls, I should disclose that I'm not encouraging 2 a.m. phone calls. Instead, the idea is that if you're out there on a Saturday morning and need a question answered or some guidance to continue working and you just want to make sure it's being done correctly before you move on, you should be able to speak with a qualified erector and someone who knows the product inside and out immediately, not on Monday or whenever someone gets around to returning a call next week, if they do at all. It's the same reason we've also been putting together those construction support videos. A video goes a lot, a lot farther than just a phone conversation. We have a ton of videos and pictures that are available to help you out. Now, they don't have the, the, the production quality or whatever they say for our YouTube channel, but they're available through email, so please ask. Okay, th this has gone a lot longer than I had planned, and, and I appreciate that you stuck around. Eventually, we'll do another video on, on the other great features of our building, uh, like our premium trim packages, special construction instructions, uh, ugh, excuse me, special construction instructions, and, and our other standard features. And hopefully, the information here is useful in your search for a building system that meets the, the project goals and needs uh, for, for, for you even if that means it's not a great Western. Thanks again and build great.